Well, hello friends, Coach Bob with you today, and today we're going to be talking about those killer motorcycles. Now, I know motorcycles don't just hop up there and kill you. I know they don't. Uh, I have a few of them, and if, uh, if they did do that, I wouldn't be here anymore. So what do I mean by that? I mean that motorcycles, you know, by nature, by the very nature of them, they are dangerous, and they, redo, they do require a little more diligence than just, say, a pickup truck. Although pickup trucks can be dangerous too, you have more skin in the game when you're exposed. And I get a lot of this from spider riders going, hey, but I can't fall over. No, but you can get hit. You can get knocked off your machine. You can, you can hit a deer at 60 miles an hour and end up sliding down the pavement. You can do that. It, it does happen. So, you know, this doesn't matter whether you're a two-wheeler or a three-wheeler person. I want you to watch a couple of videos. And I'm, we're going to draw a comparison here. We're going to talk about times. So the first one you're looking at right here over the top of my big old wonderful big old fat head, this is a picture of Joan Mir, a Suzuki rider, sliding down the pavement. He's going really fast, and his recovery is really quite wonderful too, but he just walks away from this like it's nothing. I mean, it's, it's nothing. Uh, no injury, no this, no that, maybe a few abrasions to the old suit. Uh, but none to the old glute, if you know what I mean. So the question I'm asked often is, Coach, why do you consistently seem to be making videos about safety and gear and this and that? And the reason is, and I've learned this through coaching over the years. Fix the back of my chair here. But over the years, I've, I've, I've had the privilege of coaching many people. And what I've discovered is it is through repetition that we learn. Learn it, start breaking the rule, the rule gets reinforced, we relearn it and relearn it and relearn it and relearn it. And eventually, it sticks. And that's why we do this kind of stuff. In the agency, when I worked for the Federal Aviation Administration, we had constant refresher courses teaching us what we already knew so that we wouldn't forget it or fall into lazy practices that might very well cost someone their life. Well, in our world, the very life that we would cost is ours. So that's why I make these kinds of videos. So now we want to draw a comparison to the video we're about to watch. But before we get going with the video, if you would do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Enough of that though. So this video was put out in Australia. Um, it's one of their safety commercials that they do, trying to encourage people to wear gear. The audio, just listen to it. It's not that great. The, the commercial, I think, is kind of old. But anyway, give it a listen. Check this out. <laughs> very moment the rider is protected but it only takes 0 0.03 seconds for the sneaker to burst 0.6 seconds for the jeans to disintegrate the hoodie gone in 0 0.03 seconds then like a human crayon his flesh is shredded by the coarse bitumen All right, so you can see there is a dramatic difference in uh, Mr. Mears' accident and this guy in the commercial. I don't know if you heard that, but 0 0.03 seconds is what it took to rip a shoe off, 0 0.6 seconds to shred through his jeans, and 0 0.03, yet again, to get through that wonderful hoodie he was wearing. So those are some pretty short times. So what I wanted to do is... is recognize the fact that the rider was wearing a helmet. He was wearing a helmet. And that's why he's alive, honestly. Um, he'd have probably slapped that noggin right there on the ground. That could have been a game ender. We had a friend years ago who got in an accident and honestly was not wearing a helmet. Um, a friend of mine, a firefighter who was friends with the person as well, said that this person was unrecognizable after their fall. Um, very, very sad. Helmet's pretty important pretty important. So as we look at gear and talk about gear, we're going to talk a little bit about different things. 
One thing you'll notice is that the guy was not wearing gloves. They did not show his hands. Hands are one of those things you slap down trying to catch yourself and they will get taken to the bone real, real quick. You've heard me talk many times about how uh, I wish all gloves had the pinky and the ring finger part of the glove sewn together. It is very, very common for the old pinky to find itself pointing in a different direction or be gone if you're not wearing a glove. It gets peeled out in that direction and then just ground right off. That is a very, very common hand injury, a very traumatic hand injury. Um, you don't want any part of that. So wear gloves. Even if you don't have those two fingers sewn together on the gloves, wear a pair of gloves. So you can see this is a, this is a competition glove. These two fingers are sewn together as I was showing you. Um, phenomenal glove. I wish that this, my favorite glove, had those two fingers attached. I've got a buddy of mine who is, uh, we were talking about going to a seamstress and having my gloves modified on, and his gloves modified, just to stitch these two together. Also, this is the Dionese MIG glove, a very, very good glove, very high quality. If you can make that slide down the concrete, you definitely want a pair of gloves. They didn't even address that in the video. So let's talk about shoes first. This right here is a pair of my Vans. Yeah, I, I, you know, I know what you're saying. Coach, you're, you're 61 years old. You still wear Vans? What's wrong with you? Um, I love my Vans. They look good, but they're not good for riding. Do I ever ride in a pair of Vans? Hate to admit it, I have been known to run down to the corner store wearing a pair of Vans, and it only takes, I know what you're gonna say, thought I was gonna say one time. No, it only takes 0 .03 seconds for me to regret not wearing the proper foot attire. But you can see there's nothing here. It's just a canvas top. And as soon as that hits the concrete, it tears a hole right in that shoe, and next is your foot. Anyone who's ever skateboarded or done anything where they're running down the road and they fall and they, they end up kind of dragging the top part of their shoe, you'll tear a hole in your shoe just like that. Uh, there's a lot, there. <laughs> shoes are not real powerful on the top. So here's the boot that I wear. It's an Alpine Star boot. You can get the boot you want, but this right here, this is that spot that you saw that, that, that foot hit in that video. See right here, you have a nice piece of TPU. That's a thermoplastic. That's a fancy, fancy acronym for you. But this slider right here is replaceable. There are little screws in there that you can take this off. And this slider is replaceable if you damage it. But this part of your foot is the part that is going to grab the ground. So you want this part protected. It's heavy duty. There is a, a hard cup, a hard plastic cup right there that covers the toes. And there's a heel cup that protects the heel. And the bottom is stiff so that you don't see that foot. You saw how the foot in the video folded under. This keeps that from folding under. A boot, a good quality boot, doesn't have to be the Alpine Star. It can be the boot of your choice, but the boot is very, very important. So the next thing they talked about was jeans. Now these are just a pair of my jeans. These are Calvin Klein's. Now when I look at these, you can see they're a little worn, right? Like most of our jeans, you wear them a while and they, they get a little bit worn out. But even in the back of the calf, where it would be the thickest, because not a lot of wear back here, and in the back of where your ankle is, it really feels very, very thin. I'm going to tell you, these would not last very long. A half a second is about all you got. How far are you going to go in a half a second? Not very far. You're going to be sliding a lot further, and the rest of you is going to be stopping that motorcycle. So let's look at a pair of riding jeans, my Street & Still Oakland jeans. Now, these jeans are warm in the summer, I will tell you. They have, have an aramid reinforcement in the butt and in the hips. And as you look at this, you've got this layer that is between this mesh and the jean itself. That layer, and this stops abrasion resistance, right? This, this moves with your skin so your skin doesn't tear. And then you have the actual aramid up under that. And the same thing holds true all the way down to the thighs, into the knee area as well. So your points of impact from your knees to your hips, as far as abrasion and sliding and tearing 
They're pretty well covered. And additionally, they come with CE rated armor in the knees. So this is the knee armor that comes in them. It works very well. I, I highly recommend a good pair of riding jeans. I just do. So the hoodie, I love hoodies. I have probably 30 of them. I drive Coach Vic crazy. Every time we go to a swim meet, there's a hoodie, I buy it. Every time I see a hoodie in a store, I think it's cool, I buy it. I have friends, they'll, they'll see something and they'll say, man, that reminds me of Bob and they'll buy it and they'll send it to me. I just have hoodies everywhere. This is one of my favorites. This is one that my son got me when he was in the Navy. The thickness of this is a typical hoodie. 0.03 seconds is how long that will last on the pavement. Man, that is, that's that. That is that. It's crazy. You can wear a hoodie and wear the Bond armor up under that hoodie and you will look cool while still being safe and you'll not leave you on the concrete. This is an Alpine Star jacket of mine. It has a, a TPU piece right here and it has armor under that. Elbow armor that runs from elbow all the way down to wrist. Level two back armor I have in here. And also this has a level one armor right here in the chest. My Alpine Star stuff, I really do believe in it. Are all jackets created equal? They are not. Some are more abrasion resistant, some are more impact resistant. So let's talk about that real quick. Impact versus abrasion. Impact is, it's this, it's the hit. It's when you slam into the ground. A jacket with a heavy rated armor is gonna be more impact resistant. A jacket with a thicker material is going to be more abrasion resistance. That slide. That's why I was saying when you wear the Bond armor, it's good to wear a jersey over the top of it, that everything you wear on the top of that Bond armor is another layer of abrasion resistance. And you have to decide how much of that you want. Now, on the Bond armor, also you have these thick CE level two heavy, heavy pieces of armor, and they are in high impact zones, which also happen to coincide with high slide zones. So those things will, if, if you're sliding on the pad, those are multiple, multiple, multiple layers of abrasion resistance. You know, I was speaking to a nurse one evening in the ER, and he was telling me about a guy that he had treated who was riding, and the dude slid down the concrete and it ground his kneecaps off. That's pretty hard to imagine, isn't it? That's why you wear knee pads. That's why you wear them. You know, you never know when you're gonna need this stuff. You, you don't have warning signs. I'm gonna show a video right here that I thought was really cool. It's really old, so I'm sorry about the pixelation on it because it is an older video. Um, it was made over in England. This particular video, you're gonna see the guy riding and every time he goes to do something stupid, there will be a sign that will show, don't do that because this is about to happen and don't do that because this is going to happen. It's everything from, I'm gonna turn in front of you to look out for the cow poop. All right, so check this video out and enjoy it.
right. So there it is, right? We don't have that. So we have to wear gear and ride properly. So this is number one in a series of two, maybe three videos. Next week, we're gonna be talking about speed, how speed kills. I found a great video on this. You're gonna really like it. The guy does a, a deconstruction of an accident, but it's, it's done in an artistic way. It's not an actual accident. It's something that they put together for this video made by the same people. That's gonna be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Also, we're gonna be doing another You Ask For It, You Got It for the month of June. All right, so wear your gear. It's really, really important. But until next time, I want you to do me a favor. Go out, buy the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself. Remember, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Now wear that gear. We don't want you smeared like a crayon across the concrete. Thank you.